Till 1940, almost three quarters of the Costa Rican land was forest area. So what exactly happened? Logging, farming, population growth. All these factors led to a massive decrease in the forest cover of the country. The downfall started from 1950 and in merely 10 years, almost 20% of its forest cover was lost. And the final blow was in the year 1987, when they realized that just 21% of the forest is remaining and most of the land in northern Costa Rica was barren. The logging industry was responsible for majority of deforestation. Just to locate certain tree species like seda and mahogany, the companies used to tear down a whole forest. Building roads and infrastructure was another reason for deforestation. Farmers cut down forests for banana and pineapple plantations. This bode well for the country as it produced 13% of all the bananas in the world, but the use of fertilizers led to the nutrient imbalance in the soil. In 1955, it was reported that the Costa Rica had over a million people and recently it crossed the 5 million mark. This was also a major reason for forest loss. Also, the USA offered a lot of money to the cattle ranchers to produce beef in Costa Rica. This led to mass pasture cleaning and in a snap, the lush rainforests were gone. There were grave effects on the beautiful Costa Rica because of forest loss like climate change, extreme weather conditions and fires breaking out more frequently. Land erosion which in turn contributed to flooding, desertification and the sediments in the rivers. Decrease of wildlife, loss of endemic species, loss of biodiversity. Then how this nation became a model nation in terms of sustainability, biodiversity and environmental protection. Somebody had to stop this. And finally, voices calling for the change were heard. We have the obligation ethical and historic to be consistent with our legacy of peace, democracy and respect to the environment. It all started because of the series of well-planned decisions and the right combination of choices to reverse this catastrophe of deforestation. In 1948, Costa Rica dissolved the army and put all the money in environment protection funds instead. In 1969, the nation created Costa Rica's forestry department. To their luck, USA sanctioned them a loan which they directly invested in environmental programs. The policymakers smartly changed their legislation in the environment's favor. People were made aware about the importance of forest and how they helped to tackle the climate change. Costa Rica created National Forest Financing Fund in 1996, which focused on environmental preservation and reforestation. The government prohibited on cutting major forest and also started giving money to the farmers and plantation owners to not chop down the trees. For every hectare saved, the people would get $120 and eventually Costa Rica recovered 1.1 million hectares of forest cover. This restoration helped Costa Rica to attract tourism, re-establish nutrient balance, recover the biodiversity loss, boost its economy and poverty reduction. And this is how Costa Rica became sustainable and an example to the world. According to the United Nations, nearly 90% of the world's marine fish stocks are depleted due to overfishing. National Geographic states that around 170 billion pounds of fishes fall prey to fishing vessels and fishing companies. Vanessa Jaite says, different factors have caused declines in reef fish populations. In Pacific alone, harvests from the fisheries will fall between 25% by 2050, according to the IUCN. This is affecting water temperatures, destruction of the coral reefs, which in turn is leading to low oxygen levels. 
It is having a profound effect on fish habitats, ocean ecology, and fish populations. A small Pacific island nation of Palau has taken an unprecedented step to fight this battle against overfishing. They have decided to ban almost 80% of its marine area for fishing and to create a marine reserve area which is compared to the size of France. Though critics think it might be a punitive step, as fishing is a major source of income for Palau people, their president has stated a live tuna or shark is worth a thousand times more than a dead fish. Palau and its neighboring islands manages one third of world's tuna stock which comes about 5.5 billion US dollars. Then why is Palau shooting itself in the feet by damaging its economy? Palau is thinking about the biodiversity of the Pacific. The fishing ban will also help protect 11 species of dolphins and 15 species of whale which get killed by fishing vessels. Also, after the ban, thousands of fishes will populate the Pacific without any human hindrance. Proper balance of the world's aquatic ecosystem is integral in maintaining the world's biodiversity. Palau is truly creating a sustainable example and other countries should learn and start such sustainable practices which can restore the ocean biodiversity.